Hello there, World of Tankers. I'm Jordos Blitz, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the IS-3 and comparing it to the IS-5. Now, both of these are Tier 8 Russian heavy tanks, and they look and play very, very similar in style. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the similarities, the differences between both the tanks, the armor profiles, the guns, and everything else you need to know. So, of course, if you'd like this type of content and you want to see more like this, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. We had a poll this morning, and you guys voted to see this, so if you want to vote on more polls and you're not subscribed, I'll make sure to click that bell icon as well down below. But here we go, the IS-3 and the IS-5. So yeah, they look almost identical. Even on the rear of the tanks, you can see they are very, very similar, almost like twins. So there are some similarities and differences between the vehicles. Now the IS-3 is a more accurate tank. It doesn't have as much damage per minute, but it's only like 20 difference. So it's got the same damage around the same penetration. It's 236 on this and 232 on the IS-5. Although I will say the IS-5 has way more premium pen because of course it does shoot heat, but you do get APCR as the premium pen for this tank. So it does gain some advantages with calibration and other stuff. So it's about the same in my opinion on penetration values, but the IS-3 is a little bit more mobile. It's got a better power to weight ratio, but there are some downsides to it. First of all, the frontal armor on this tank is not as strong. The upper plate on this vehicle is around 200 millimeters base, where the IS-5 is about 230. So it's definitely way more thick, and you can tell just by looking at the angle that the IS-3's plate is not as steep than the IS-5's. However, the IS-5 has a much larger lower plate, and it's only about 160 millimeters thick on the IS-5, where the IS-3's lower plate is about 185. So you can angle it. There's a lot of disadvantages and advantages advantages to both of the armor profiles. Now, I personally like the IS-5 better on the armor-wise because, first of all, it's got way more side armor, better for side scraping. As well, I think the IS-5 just does a better job of bouncing shells in the upper plate. Now, both of these tanks don't really have much gun depression, but I will say the IS-3 has a little bit better dispersion. It's about 0.2 better um, 0.02 better, don't get that confused, but it's a little bit better dispersion, and as well the aiming time is about a half a second quicker, so it is the more accurate tank, and when you do have that nice dispersion on move values with this tank, it does feel quite a bit more, I'd say, nice to use when you're on the move, when you're trying to stop, and as well the IS-3 has a much more solid turret. It doesn't really have cupolas on the top, it does have that one little thing next to the gun which you can shoot, but overall it's very very hard to hit the roof of an IS-3, where the IS-5 if you're face hugging it's very easy to hit it. But again, if you're face hugging an IS-3, well most of the time you can penetrate right in the hull. So once again there are many many differences, similarities between all of these vehicles, but you're gonna see here one nice thing is they both go upwards of 40 kilometers per hour, which is one thing the Object 252 on the enemy team doesn't. So I'm very easily able to get up to top speed as you can see here, and I'm going to get into position able to contest the enemy tanks. Now this is the perfect kind of map for an IS-3. I'm going to be pushing it right up to these walls up here, which is able to use my decent gun depression. 5 degrees is, I'd say it's not great, it's not terrible, it's about average. But I'm going to use it right here, which means that I can easily shoot the enemy tanks if I need to. We've got that T-34-3, who we just got a nice tap. We didn't really have the uh, the most damage out of that tap, but we still do have really nice pen. And you can see there, even the 34-3, which is based on a Type 59 tall, we were still very easily able to tap with our standard damage. So here we go, we got that uh, T-54, nice tap right into you. So I'm just going to continue to hold this position, but you can see accuracy-wise, it's really not that bad for the tank. Its reload is quite long, I think it's around 12 seconds or so, which, yeah, is really, really bad. And just to tech test out the accuracy, let's have a little fun on this T-95 and... Well, that's Russian bias, I guess, for you there, but yeah, the fact that that actually hit that T-95 was a miracle. So, not sure what my Centurion's doing there, but I have a feeling it's not going to do too well against that T-95. Now, I'm not actually going to bother with that again. The chances of that penning two times in a row are about slim to none. We got that Object 252. Nice little tap right into the lower plate. Object 252 actually has a super, super weak lower plate. But as you can see here, I am using my solid turret and making sure that people can't shoot at my lower plate in this position. So it's making my vehicle a lot stronger overall. We got that VK who I'm not sure if we can actually pen in the side. So let's go for the lower plate there. Nice little tap. We're already at around 2000 damage. But the thing is, is that the IS-5 and the IS-3 are so similar. I really can't say there's a major difference between the tanks other than the armor profile and um, how you are running the tank. So like in this scenario, I think that the IS-3 is actually a nicer tank just because you need that accuracy. Like that T-95 shell, there's no way I would have ever hit the uh, 
the T95 with an IS-5. I just don't think it would have happened. And like that shell there, you can see it actually pretty easily went right where I aimed. So again, something that is definitely a little bit struggle in the IS-5. I think the IS-5 actually has the worst accuracy out of all the tanks. So I'm going to try and get into a reverse side scraping position here, which pretty much means that it's very hard to penetrate my tank. Now it still did go right through my side armor, but it's definitely much harder to pen me. Now, like this object 252, I'm pretty sure I'm going to out-reload it very, very easily here. Let's use our nice backup speed to get another tap right into the lower plate. Actually, we didn't out-reload it, but it did have its adrenaline on there for a couple seconds. But first game in the IS-3, you can see it was a very, very solid game. Able to get out quite a bit of damage. In fact, over 3,000, 3,503 to be exact. So I'm not expecting to get that much out in the IS-5, but don't make it think like it's a worse tank. I just think that both of them are very strong. Now, personally, I do like the IS-3 better. The reason for that being is, first of all, the IS-3 looks nicer in my opinion, and second of all, it doesn't have the weak spot on the roof of the turret. As strong as the IS-5 is, when you're face-hugging people, those cupolas on the roof are very, very easy to penetrate, and the IS-3 doesn't have that problem, so you can get in much more, um, I'd say, turret positions, I can't really word that correctly right now, my brain isn't working, but positions where you can make your vehicle haul down and really use your turret armor, in my opinion, works a lot better in the IS-3. Even the side armor on the IS-3's turret is a lot stronger. So the IS-5 is sort of a beefier build overall, but it is a little slower, I will say that, but it does have more armor all round. So you're going to be finding that out here. I'm probably going to be running it a lot more aggressive, but you will see it takes a little bit longer to, uh, to accelerate, but yeah, we're going to get up to about 42 kilometers per hour. And once you get there, it is pretty quick. It's able to stay at around that top speed, as you can see here, but it does slow down when you are climbing up hills, reaching around 30 kilometers up this hill, but it still is a very quick tank. Now, looking at that dispersion, you can see the difference right now from the IS-3 and the IS-5. The IS-3 is just way more accurate as well because it does have AP shells as a standard ammo. It's a lot more reliable. APCR shells tend to ricochet off tanks quite a bit more. There we go. We got the uh, RHM spotted and a very lucky tap. 560 damage. Very nice roll as well. But uh, that was just a lucky tap, I'd have to say, into the uh, side of that RHM, whipping off about half of the tank's health. Now, the Object 252 actually carries the same weakness of my tank, and as I said, there you go, you can see actually that hit us in the upper hull. I thought that hit us in the uh, roof of the tank, but it turns out that that Object 252 can actually see our hull. I didn't think that was actually, uh, actually possible. So let's see if we can get a nice tap into that tank inside. There we go, waited for it to aim in, and we did get the tap. Hopefully my uh, Conqueror will not fall apart, as it looks like it's doing right now. But that Object 252 is definitely keeping a close eye on me, which I really am not the fondest of. I want to get that Tiger 2, because it's AFK and it's a lot of damage, but let's see. No, we did not hit that shell. Um, I really don't want to deal with that 252. We've got the Conqueror there, who's pushing quite aggressive. And as long as that Conqueror does hold off tanks like that object, let's get a nice tap right into the, uh, the Tiger 2's hall. Now, heat rounds, as I said on this tank, you do have a much nicer amount of premium pen, which means that I'm able to tap shells into, like, that Tiger 2. And uh, even against tanks like this Tankenstein, I'm really not going to have to worry that much about penning them in the frontal armor. So I can't hit that Tankenstein right now, so let's just load another premium shell right in front of the Tiger 2. Another tap. So at about half of 3,000 damage right now, 1,600. I'll just keep tapping that, tapping that Tiger while, uh, while I'm waiting for the enemy to uh, do their thing. And hey, you never know, this Tiger could come back. But just some free damage while I am in the moment. I'm not sure if our Conqueror is shooting the guy, but I hope he is. That way we can finish him off and deal with these guys. But, um, you know what, my Conqueror might need a little bit of help here, so let's try and help him out deal with his Tankens 9. Uh, you know, I might actually be able to tap a shell into the roof of that Object 252, but let's finish off the Tankens 9 first, then I can deal. Oof, that's gonna hurt. Not sure what hit me there, but it really did, uh, crumple my tank, and I used the wrong repair kit, but that's not the end of the world, judging that that IS-5 just shot. Not the IS-5, got them, getting them all confused already. But um, I want to tap this Object 252 right in the side there. Uh, it would be nice if this Conqueror would help me out, judging that, you know, I am uh, rushing here, risking my hit points to help him out. I'm going to try and wiggle the tank to my best of the abilities. But uh, yeah, it would be really nice if that Conqueror could help me out right now. Another nice tap, though. 450. Oof, that's a nice roll. And because we do actually have, I think, around the same DPM. Ooh, it was the RHM that hit us. As you can see there... Side armor working to the best of its abilities, and let's get one last tap into the Object 252 side armor. Come on, Conker, please shoot this guy and not focus on the RHM, and you bounced it. Of course you did. But, um, hey, we might, yeah, uh, Object 252 is probably actually going to shoot that guy. There we go. And, um, 
There we go, nice tap right into the side of the Object 252. So there you go, you can actually see Object 252 is not the most overpowered vehicle. In fact, with power creep, it isn't broken in my opinion. It is a strong tank, but I can do just as well in the IS-5 here as you can see. So let's finish off. Ooh, we blew the shell, and we did die. But um, yeah, looks like the enemy team really wanted to clear me. But as you can see, both of these games, we did about the same damage. And the armor profiles really would have worked the same way. Now, the reason I personally like the IS-3 better is, first of all, 20 millimeters of armor does make a difference in certain battles, maybe against tier 7 tanks. But most people that are up in the front lines, like an IS-5, is probably just going to shoot you in the lower plate, load premium in your upper plate. I actually like the IS-3 better because people don't load premium on you, so they actually do have the occasional bounce. And as well, I think the IS-3 just looks nicer. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But yeah, they're pretty both nice tanks. I think that the uh, Object 730, which is actually a fun little fact, that is the name of the IS-5. But the IS-5 is a solid tank for $5. In fact, for $5, what you get is a great vehicle. But at the same time, if you don't care about credits and you are a free-to-play player and you think, hey, I'll get the vehicle, it really isn't going to give you much of an advantage over the IS-3 other than the fact that you can earn credits in it. Because as you can see here, did about the same damage, but we were able to earn 41,000 credits where the IS-3 game in a victory, we only earned 32,000. So in defeat, we probably would have made about 10,000. So I think they're both very solid tanks. I, As I said, I personally like the IS-3 better. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys do like the best. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It really does help out the channel. But other than that, I hope you guys are all doing happy out there. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Yes, English is wonderful today. Stay healthy. And I'll see you in the next one.